last time on The Bill. All right, Rob, now that we have the block on the engine stand, uh, what's next? Well, the first thing we're going to do is we're going to check our ring end gap. Okay. Make sure, you know, when the rings went up and down the cylinder, once it gets hot, that there's a gap at the end of that ring that it's going to expand. And if the ring gap's too tight, it'll okay. touch them, and then the rings ain't got nowhere to go, and they break. What we usually like to do, there's a formula for that. You take the, the cylinder bore diameter, times 0 .004, and that okay. gives you a pretty good end gap that's going to work. And on this engine, it comes out to about 16 thousandths. I'm going to set that in there, and I got me a squaring tool here. Sixteen thousand. Right on the money. Perfect. And we know the compression rings are all right there where we want them. We'll check some of the oil expanders and make sure they're okay. Typically they are. What's the purpose of having those rings? Do they like an oil scraper? Yeah, these work as the oil scraper and there's an expander between them. Okay. Correct. It's rare you find these that are off. Things are looking so good, things are checking out. What do we do next? Yeah, we're going to roll it over and start putting our crankshaft in. And this bearing is an upper bearing. We know that for a couple reasons. It's marked, plus, we got the oil holes in the top gotcha. bearing. Okay. The bottom ones don't have it. Already pre cleaned our crankshaft. It's ready to go in, and right now we're not going to put any lube on it because we're going to plastic gauge it. Okay. A little piece of plastic is all that is. This is the lower bearing. As you can see, there's no oil hole in this. Right. It gets its oil from the crankshaft feeding through it. You know, got oil coming through our oil feed, and then this crankshaft through these holes, it's going crank. It's going from the main to the rod, to the rod, to the main, to the rod, to the main. That oil's going all the way through that crankshaft as it's running, and that's what feeds this. Okay. It's got a continual oil wedge built up around the, that journal when it's running. Okay. So really, uh, just because of that oil-based metal really never touches metal? Correct. Because of that. That's what we're going to check the clearance there to make sure we got clearance for that Oil the oil wedge to be okay. in there, correct. Yeah, this one's stamp number one. So that's why we're going to put this one right there. This is what they call a thrust bearing. As you see, the bearing overlaps both sides. Right. That's where the crankshaft it controls the fore and aft movement of the crankshaft. Uh. Okay. It matches up right there. So it's right at one and a half. So now we'll remove our crankshaft. Okay. And we're going to fill up that oil gap. First, I'm just going to spin this crank over, see how it feels. Make sure we ain't got any hard spots in it. You know, it's nice and free. Look at that. Just, it's just checking the straightness of our crank, checking our oil clearances. Everything's nice. We're looking good right there. So the next thing we're going to do is start putting some rings on some pistons and some bearings on there, and we're going to start putting them in the holes. Awesome.